In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's talk about interfaces. So interfaces are a special type of abstract class that allows for multiple inheritance. One of the main drawbacks of a regular basic abstract class is that you can only inherit from one class at a time. So if you're going to inherit from an abstract class, you can only inherit from a single abstract class. If you had multiple abstract classes and you wanted to create a class that inherits from multiple abstract classes, you simply could not do it. That's where interfaces come into place. Interfaces are a special type of abstract class specifically to get around this limitation of abstract classes. So let's say that we have two interfaces, one called value one and one called value two. And each of these define a property. One is value one property, one is value two property. They're very specific. Each interface only shows one thing to inherit. Now let's say we have four other interfaces, each one of them defining a method. One interface that defines sum, one interface that defines product, one that defines difference, and one that defines quotient. Now that we have all of these multiple interfaces, we can use them to define a class. So for example, if we have a value increase class, we can say that the value increase class inherits from both the value one and value two interface, as well as the sum and product interface. Now, if we have a value decrease class, once again, we can inherit from value one and value two interfaces, as well as the difference and quotient interfaces. We've inherited from multiple infer interfaces in order to define what these classes contain. One other neat thing is that interfaces can actually inherit from other interfaces. So you can make one large interface that combines the, all of the other interfaces that you want to define for any sort of class that's going to inherit from them. This mix and match makes interfaces an integral part to decoupling your code. So let's go ahead and take a look at interfaces in some code. So here inside my interfaces folder, I'm going to go and add class. And below the class item, we can see interface here. It's also found in the subfolder of code. So if we select interface, I can go down here and name my interface. And typically for naming convention wise, you're going to name your interfaces with the beginning letter of a capital I. Now there's a little bit of back and forth amongst the community as to whether or not this is truly a best practice. But since most people expect an I to start for an interface naming, I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. Now this interface is going to define the value one property. So I'm gonna say I value one property. Now inside the scope of the I value one property is where we're going to define the members, which in this case is only going to be one property. Now in the past, we've really worried about access modifiers, but in the case of interfaces, we don't have to worry about the access modifier when it comes to the members themselves. The interface itself is where we're going to define the accessibility to the interface. It's really usually the best practice to give your interfaces a public access modifier. Now let's go ahead and define the member that we want inside of our I value one property. Now it's return data type is just going to be object because once again, we need this to be very generic. We don't know if this property is going to be a data type of int or decimal or double or even a string or a class object. We just want it to be some sort of object. Now the name of this property is just gonna be value one and it's going to have both the get and set accessors. And once again, I only have one member on this interface. I could add additional ones. So if I wanted to, I could certainly have object value two, but typically you don't want to have too many items in each interface, because again, you can inherit from multiple interfaces in your classes. So it makes sense to be as granular as possible in the definitions of your interfaces. Let's go ahead and create another interface and we'll call this one I value two property. Once again, I'm gonna say that this is a public interface and it's an object that's gonna be the return type. Its name is value two and it has both the get, oops, the get and set accessors. 
Let's save that. And now let's give another interface here. So I'm going to add class interface I sum method. And here on this interface, it's once again a public interface. Now the I sum method is going to define a method called sum that's going to have a return type of object. So object sum. Now the intent here is that we're going to create classes that each method is going to utilize the properties that are already assigned to the class in order to then output the sum. So we're not going to use any parameters for this definition of the sum. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll do the same thing now for the product, the difference, and the quotient methods. So now that I'm done defining my individual interfaces, I'm actually going to define some more interfaces that inherit from these multiple interfaces to do precisely what I want them to do. So I'm going to go to interfaces, add class interface. And now this time I'm going to call this I value increase because this is going to be an interface that includes all of the increase methods and properties required. Once again, we're calling this a public interface, but we're going to inherit now from I value one property, comma, I value two property, comma, I sum method, comma, I product method. Now, since I'm inheriting from each one of these interfaces, to define this interface, which again is just another abstract method, I still don't need to define any actual logic. So now it's time to go ahead and define our class that's actually going to utilize this structure of interfaces. I'm going to right click on the interfaces folder, add class, and this is going to be an actual class. It's not going to be another interface. This class is going to implement the I value increase interface. Now this class is going to have specific data types associated with it. I'm going to go ahead and call this integer value increase class. Now this integer value increase class is going to implement the I value increase interface. Now the members haven't been defined yet that make this integer value increase class compatible with the I value increase interface. And once again, I can use the little idea button here. And for those of you who aren't aware, you can actually put the cursor inside of the of this item that has the red squiggly line. And to see the suggestion, you can hit control period, and that'll bring up the same menu, which gives us the implement interface. So I'm going to go ahead and select the implement interface from the menu here. And you can see that it goes out and it creates all of the code for me. Now I do need to make some modifications here. In fact, the get and set accessors, we can go ahead and shorten. We don't need the full implementation. So now in our product method, we need to change this from a not implement the exception to an actual returning value. So I'm going to go ahead and take out this throw a new not implemented exception out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and return value one times value two. But since these are objects, they cannot use the multiplication operator. So I need to once again go ahead and convert them. And since this is an integer class, I'm calling this class integer, the user should expect that this should be a type of integer. So I'm going to convert these explicitly to integers. Oops, int. And this works just fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing down here for the sum. So there's one last thing I'd like to do with this integer value class before we use it. I'm going to go ahead and define a class constructor. So I'm going to use CTOR. And in order for a user to actually use this integer value increase class, I want to make sure that they pass along some values into the parameters of the class constructor. So we're going to go ahead and say int, because again, we want to make sure that the user is passing in int values. And the first parameter is called value one. And the second one is value two. And then we're just going to go ahead and assign to value one the, re the passed in value of value one from the constru constructor. 
and then the same thing for value 2. Now we can go ahead and save this. And in our usage of this inside of our main method of our program class, now we can go ahead and define an object, but it's going to be of a type I value increase. That's the interface. That's our abstract class that defines what should be included in the class. What are the members that should be in that class? And we're going to call this object, I'm just going to go ahead and call it my math. And we're going to go ahead and assign it an instance, a new instance of the integer value increase. And once again, the integer value increase class requires as part of its constructor an int value one and an int value two. So let's go ahead and do seven and eight. So this works just the same way as the abstract classes that we've worked with before. But there's an entire hierarchy of interfaces that inherit from one another to define this I value increase. And then subsequently, how we use the I value increase in our class definition for integer value increase. It's this piecemeal approach to defining your classes that makes parts very easily interchangeable. So now let's say that I had some sort of class that I wanted to create to replace this integer value increase class because I want it to behave in a slightly different manner. I'm going to go back into my interfaces folder and I'm going to go ahead and create this replacement class. Now this replacement class, I'm going to go ahead and call updated integer value increase. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and say that it must inherit from the I value increase interface and we'll implement the interface. Let's go ahead and fix the get and set accessors here. For our product method, rather than having it return value one times value two, let's say for this class, we actually want to swap these around. I know this is a distinction without a difference, but you can see that I can change the code. I can have a different behavior inside of this product method now from what the original class is up here in the integer value increase. Notice that here I'm returning value one times value two, but now instead I wanna say value one times value two. So I'm swapping these two operands around, but once again, of course, I need to do int to explicitly convert these two values. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here for my sum, return int value two plus int value one. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and add my class constructor. So now I can go ahead and save this new class, which does behave slightly different from the integer value increase class. And all I have to do in order to implement this new class is instead of changing my value here, my, my data type here from this my math object, all I have to do is change what it says here for what instance of class I'm instantiating. That would be the updated integer value increase. So we could actually even do control H to go out and find and replace. So we're gonna find integer value increase with updated integer value increase. And we could look through the entire project or solution for any usage of this integer value increase class and now replace it with the updated integer value increase class. Go ahead and replace this. It changed in one location. And since the implementation of the both classes has the inheritance of the I value increase interface, this is going to work just fine. And I don't have to go through and try to figure out where I might have screwed up or goofed up the code because this my math object has some sort of different set of methods and properties on it. 
because we can guarantee that any inheritance of the I value increase interface is included in this updated integer value increase just as it was with the integer value increase class. That is the beauty of using interfaces and in abstract classes is that now you can make your changes. I can change my updating integer value increase class to replace the original class without breaking the code and having to make all sorts of changes throughout the code. 